External hard drives are a necessity for a lot of video editing projects and choosing the right one can make a massive difference to the speed of your editing. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the different types of hard drives and SSDs available and my recommendations when it comes to the best drives for video editing. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. We release a ton of content to help you get better results with your videos faster. If you're new here, then make sure you click that big subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description below. So let's jump into it. Now when it comes to video editing, external drives can make a big difference to the speed of your editing, as well as the security of your backups and your archives as well. Now, depending on your computer configuration and setup and depending on the hard drives that you've already got built into your computer, where an external drive can speed up the process and speed up your whole editing workflow is by separating the two. So if you've got a standard hard drive, so not a super fast drive in your computer, and that's got your operating system and all your programs and everything on it, then you can really speed up your editing by having your performance on your external drive, having a high speed external drive for fast access to the footage, fast access to your project files that will speed everything up. Now, in some cases, you might already have a fast primary drive or an operating system drive. Combining that with a fast external drive and again, keeping the two separate operating system and your project files and media for your video editing can once again, speed things up even further. So really everything comes down to the speed that you can access and transfer your files and access and run your programs to speed up the entire process. Now there's a lot of different options out there across a huge range of prices, speeds and configurations. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at what they are and my recommendations if you're looking for the best external drive for video editing. And make sure you stick around because I'll cover my simple tip to help you easily back up your video projects on the fly that I've seen help save entire working projects from being lost if your external drive ever crashes. Now when it comes to drives, there's really two main performance considerations. The first is storage size, and the second is speed. Obviously with video, storage is the big thing. Video files aren't small, so having enough storage is absolutely critical. But speed is also really important, and using slow hard drives can really make your video editing painful. With drives these days, you can usually get one or the other relatively cheaply, but combining the two into one drive is where it gets expensive. SSDs, for example, are fast, but they get expensive quickly as your storage capacity goes up. Hard drives, on the other hand, are slower, but you can get much, much higher storage capacity versus an SSD for the same price. With that in mind, using a mix of the two different types really starts to make sense. Hard drives where the capacity is important, but speed is not so critical. And SSDs where the speed is the main requirement, but not so much the storage. So in regards to your video and your editing process, where do each of these matter? Well, the primary use for the drives when you're editing are number one, working drives, and number two, backup drives. So number one, a working drive is where you'll store all your files while you're working on a project, hence the name. So here is where speed is important because these are the files that you're gonna be working off and editing off. So the faster drives are gonna improve the response times in your editing, your rendering speed, your general speed of editing. So you need something big enough to hold your files, but the focus is to get something as fast as you can. The second one then is backup drives, and this is where your storage capacity matters the most. So you wanna get drives as big as possible to back up your current project files for redundancy, to archive all your completed projects, any B-roll footage, really anything that you wanna keep for the future so that you have them handy. Now because these are typically backups, they're not gonna be used for working files, your speed isn't a big concern here. So now that we've covered the types of drives and what's important, let's run through what I'm currently using and what I recommend for each. Okay, first off, we'll look at working drives. Now for small projects, I use smaller, fast SSD drives, both to hold the editing project and the video footage. Now as these SSDs or high-speed drives are typically smaller, I'll use them as temporary storage while I'm working on these projects. So these are the working drives. Once I'm done with the project, I'll back it up or I'll archive the project and then I'll clear off the SSD ready for the next project. So the biggest benefit I get from working this way is that my working drive, all the files and everything are on high speed drive. So I'm using an SSD. So the file transfers fast, the whole editing process works fast, and it can also speed up your rendering and exporting if you're using fast drives as well. 
I also make sure that the computers I'm editing on have fast primary drives as well so that the operating system runs fast and so that the programs load quick and perform well as well. So in regards to fast external SSD drives, the ones that I like are the one terabyte and two terabyte Samsung drives. These are incredibly fast, but they're not cheap. And with your external drives, it also comes down to how your drive is connected to your computer. There's no point having a super fast hard drive, but losing all the speed with how you're connecting it to your computer. So you wanna make sure that you're using at least USB 3 or USB 3.1 or Thunderbolt 3 on some of the newer devices. The external drives that I'm currently using are the Samsung T3 drives. Now these are small, light, and incredibly fast. This one's a one terabyte drive, but there are different sizes available. So you just wanna get one that is able to hold the size of the projects that you're gonna have and the number of projects that you're gonna have on the go. So in regards to backups and archives, this is where you got your slower storage, which is designed for redundancy and backups. The ones that I use are a USB 3 Western Digital MyBook drive. These have a 7200 RPM drive. Um, these are six terabyte drives. You can also get them in eights, and I think there's tens out now or very soon as well. I like to back up all my stuff to a network storage as well, a NAS so that I use that, I have a running backup of all my files and then I use these as an offsite backup so that I have a copy of my files here and running and accessible if I need to, but also external in case of fire or theft. So in regards to the Western Digital Drives, I'm really not someone that is one brand specific or the other, I've got some Seagates as well. My approach to it is to get the best bang for buck drive when you're looking to purchase. These are the kinds of things that you're not normally buying every day. And next time you're gonna buy one, there'll be a better value drive available, higher storage, cheaper price. So for me right now, I'm using the WDs, the Western Digitals, but Seagate are another solid option as well. And both of these normally have around a five year warranty. So they're really, really good, solid drives. So my process then is I'll use the high-speed drives, the SSDs for the editing. Once the projects are complete on there, then I'll back up to our network storage to our uh, live running backup and then I'll also transfer off to one of these put it in the cupboard or put it externally off-site as a backup as well but really even with these the transfer rate on these is actually really really surprising there's it you connect them through with USB 3 I was pretty blown away with how fast these drives actually are and how quick you can get a heap of data onto them and we've actually used these exact drives to edit projects where we've had a huge amount of data way more than you'd fit onto a couple of SSDs. So they're definitely high performance drives. So my recommendation to you would be obviously dependent on your budget and workflow and how many editing projects or whatever you're taking on or videos you're producing is try to edit off the fastest drives you can. If the fastest drive that you've got is your internal hard drive in your computer, then use that. Wherever possible, look at external drives, look at fast external drives, and then your backups can be slower drives, but bigger drives so that you can back all of your stuff up onto them and put them away in case of fire or theft. And really, you should also have two copies of your backup. So one on-site and one off-site. So if there is a problem, you've at least got two copies. You'd hate to have to pull out your backup drive and find that the drive didn't work or that it died sitting and not running. So I've definitely seen that happen as well. So I'll always have two backup copies of every backup drive. The other hard drives that I need to mention in this video are your portable backup drives. And this is really a mix of the two. This is the, the smaller drives that are two terabyte, this one's actually a four terabyte, so it's a little bit bigger, but these are just powered off your computer. So these are great for traveling with because you don't need to take the bigger drives with the power brick as well. Um, these are slower drives as well. Most of these are 7200 RPM. So they're fast enough to edit off, but they're not gonna give you the full performance that you would with editing off an SSD or a fast external drive. But I'll take these with me when I'm traveling so that I can back up huge amounts of data, depending on the cameras and the projects we're working on, so that I can get the backups going and if I have to edit off these, these will work fine until we can come back to our higher speed drives here. But even just for portable backup drives while you're traveling, then these are perfect. So this exact one is a Seagate four terabyte and this is a Western Digital two terabyte and both of these are incredibly cheap. Now in regards to backups and not losing your video editing projects while you're working on them, one tip that I have is to automatically sync your working folder with something like Google Drive or Dropbox. And how you can do that is create a sync folder for either one of those two. 
and edit your project files or your video files from those folders. So that way they're constantly updating to Google Drive or Dropbox and the latest version is always going to be up there in the cloud as well. Now obviously this is gonna be dependent on how much data you're actually moving around and your internet speeds, but wherever possible I try to edit directly from a sync folder so that if my computer died at any given moment, there is a backup that is automatically done without me having to manually do a backup. Backups are one of those things that if we have to do them manually, a lot of people don't do. So you need to automate the process wherever possible and having an automatic backup to Google Drive or to Dropbox is a great way to make sure that that is actually done. Now, if you are editing in something like Adobe Premiere, then Adobe Premiere does have a cloud backup option for you. Make sure you turn it on because most people have it, but don't have it turned on. So if your internet is good enough, this is something that I would definitely recommend you do, even if it's just your project files or the working files. If there's not enough bandwidth or internet capabilities to upload your entire lot of footage as well, make sure your footage is backed up to a couple of bigger slower drives, but make sure your working files are automatically backed up because they're typically much, much smaller. Now, if you're interested in our recommended process for backing up your videos, then check out the video linked on screen now that covers how we back up and archive our completed projects and the best process to ensure that your old projects are accessible enough to easily reuse parts or all of them in future videos. I'll see you soon.